Can Jake Hayner hold off Spencer Rattler for the quarterback two, the backup quarterback spot for the New Orleans Saints? Ladies and gentlemen, New Orleans.Football is the channel. We are reacting, polarizing subject. The New Orleans Saints quarterback room might be the most polarizing quarterback room in the NFL. Between Derek Carr, Jake Hayner, and Spencer Rattler, people love each one of them. People hate each one of them. And there's different opinions for all of them. And today we're going to talk about who is the backup? Who is the rightful heir? And the distinction between a backup quarterback and the future franchise quarterback. We're going to talk about all of that in this video today. I'm going to let I'm going to let New Orleans football. I'm guessing it's going to be Nicholas. I'm going to get I'm going to let Nicholas kick us off before I start my uh, monologue. Can Jake Hayner hold on to his grip as a number two quarterback? And what does it mean if he doesn't? I'm Nick. Ooh. Good question. So every time I start a New Orleans football video now, now we are in OTA seasons. Now we are in training camp season. Now we are in rookie camp season. So every time I start one of these videos, I'm expecting a sun-drenched Nick or Mike Triplett in the should be standing in the parking lot at Airline Drive in Metairie at the New Orleans practice facility. So when I see them in studio, kind of throws me off for a second. Nick Unreal, and you're watching The Dot, presented by Matt Bowers Auto Group. There's no doubt that Hayner paid attention during the draft when the Saints selected Spencer Rattler in the fifth well, round. Yeah, we, and got, I think we, got, oh, we got graphics. We got all kinds of stuff happening. That, that's a, let's, let's look at the graphic, all right? I mean, it goes behind the head, behind the back, LeBron James style. Look at that. Powerful. Did Spencer Rattler in the fifth round. And I think a lot of people already got Rattler penned in as the backup quarterback. But I don't think it's a given that Rattler's going to just run away with this process. Now, it is interesting because there is a new offense and both these guys are coming in on even ground and the coaches are going to get a keep first up. look at them and there are going to be no preconceived notions and no baked in favorites for that position. But Hayner has been in the NFL for a year and he's already went through that transition process. All right. So let me, let me interject here. I don't think it really matters. TBH. I don't think it matters at all who the backup quarterback is. If, if it was up to me, what I would do, depending on, of course, I'm not seeing practice, but depending on the development, I have no problem with Jake Hayner being the backup for all the reasons that Nick just said. He has been in the NFL for a year. Him and Derek Carr get along. Like, okay, sure, fine. He, he does have experience, all that stuff. He's been in the building. He's been in the locker room. He's been around the players. Let him be the backup. But I hope that... Spencer Rattler doesn't take a snap this season. I hope Jake Hayner doesn't take a snap this season. I hope Derek Carr plays every single down. I hope he's healthy the entire year. I hope we're good the entire year. I hope the only reason we're calling on Jake Hayner or Spencer Rattler or Nathan Peterman or Bobby Bear or whoever wants to be a quarterback, the only reason we call on them is to see out a 30-point win and they take a couple of victory formation kneels and that's it. That's all I care about. So I, I really don't put a lot of stock in like who is the actual QB2, who is the literal QB2 on the depth chart. I'm not really worried about that. The bad news, ladies and gentlemen, is that the timeline doesn't add up for Jake Hayner. He, he, he would have to be so good, so good in practices and training camp and whatever. He would have to be so good that he stuck around for a couple of years through Carr's era and then would get a first crack at, at, at the starting job. Like, think about how good he would have to be, all right? If he did all that and he got the first crack at it in a couple of years, and I'm wrong about Jake Hayner, and Jake Hayner turns himself into a legitimate starting quarterback, that's fine with me, and that's a good problem to have. Just like Spencer Rattler. If Spencer Rattler does well in training camp, really develops, does, does well in practice and all that stuff, and Derek Carr leads the Saints and... In the background, Spencer Rattler's developing well, and then in a couple of years, he takes he gets the first crack at it. Good. I don't really care if it's either one of them. I'm not rooting for either one of them. I think it'll be Spencer Rattler in the future. I think Spencer Rattler is who they are developing to be the franchise quarterback. He is being developed right now. He's being developed to be the heir to Derek Carr. Now, that can all certainly change, right? Just like with Hayner. And, and I know this sound like I, I feel like I'm one of the only ones looking at this like a business decision or a roster decision and not a like biased decision of which one I'm rooting for, who I think is the, you know, who, which player I like more. 
This is strictly timelines and, and how contracts and all that add up. Right now, as it sits, it makes way more sense to look at Spencer Rattler's situation and think that is the future of where the Saints are going with the quarterback. Now, let's say the Saints are terrible this year. Let's say that Derek Carr gets hurt, and let's say that Jake Hayner plays, and let's say the Saints go 2-15, and 15, and they have the first overall pick, and they take a quarterback. Well, bad news. Spencer Rattler's out, out of the picture now. Jake Hayner's out of the picture now. Because if they, if they get a crack at a number one overall quarterback or a top five quarterback or, or whatever, that resets the timeline. That resets the clock. That's just how the NFL works. You got to kind of look at how the timeline adds up. Carr will be the quarterback this year. Make no mistake about that. So that delays Hayner. That delays Rattler. So now we're talking about next season. If Carr plays well this season, Carr will be the quarterback next season. Okay? So then you're talking about Jake Hayner's that would be then his fourth season in the NFL. So his fourth season in the NFL, is he even at that point, like, is he even available to be the franchise quarterback? Is he even available to be the, the heir to Derek Carr? At that point, probably not. He's probably gone. He's probably off the team or he's aged out of that developmental process and Rattler is getting all the snaps to be the heir apparent. It's like it's almost kind of simple math. It really is. Says he knows how to study an NFL playbook. He knows what it takes to be in a meeting room, and he has been working with John Gruden all offseason. So I don't think he's somebody that should immediately be underestimated. And I think this battle is actually going to be pretty good. Now, what happens if Rattler wins it? I don't think it really means a whole lot. Nothing. It just means that the Saints have two good young players in their quarterback room that are on cost-controlled contracts who can stay around and develop. Exactly. I mean, yep. I went on a five and a half minute monologue. Nick summed it up in 10 seconds there. 100%. All this is, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it's it's obvious. Like, it's obvious what we're doing. And it's a good problem to have. We have a guy under contract in Derek Carr, a veteran quarterback who is chilling. He's chilling. We are, we are locked in to him being the quarterback this year for sure barring injury, and hopefully, fingers crossed, the Saints are good, he's good, the offense is good, then he can be the quarterback next year. That's that's what we're all hoping for. We all should be hoping for that. Because I'll tell you what is not an option. What's not an option is, oh man, well, Derek Carr sucks, he's awful, garbage, hashtag garbage, hashtag garbage, you know, that, and then all of a sudden say, well, the Saints should go sign a free agent quarterback. Well, that's not possible. Not possible. Well, the Saints should go trade for one. Can't happen. So if you are anti-car and you want car out of there, then you are risking the development of Hayner or Rattler, whoever ends up being the guy. That's why I don't want that's why I don't want either one of them to see the field. I'm cool with them practicing. I'm cool with them hanging out at the, at the training facility and practicing and doing all that stuff. But I don't want to jeopardize either of their development by forcing them onto the field early because of a car injury or whatever else happened. That's why I, I think having a, like a veteran quarterback, when they started bringing in Mond and quarter, and Peterman and all that, I thought that's what they were doing. I thought they were taking the veteran to, to have the buffer, but just in case something happened, the veteran could go in, take the lumps, and you don't you don't force uh, Rattler or Hayner in there early. But it, it is a good problem to have, and hopefully we sit back, kick our feet up, like I said, I've said before, I would do, you know, I, I would show y'all, kick my feet up right now, but I'm not wearing shoes. And I don't feel like starting OnlyFans, if you know what I'm saying. But it's a good problem to have. Kick back, put your feet up, let Carr play out his contract with whatever happens, hopefully good things. Meanwhile, let Hayner and Rattler develop with no pressure. And then in a couple of years, we'll see what happens. And we'll see, one, we'll see if Hayner's still on the team, with that being his fourth year. And we'll see how they do in a preseason training camp and, and a couple years worth of OTA. So great problem to have. This is it's like the best situation ever for a team is you get a couple of young guys, you got a veteran, there's no pressure on any of the three. Like how great is that? That Hayner and Rattler can just battle it out. They can just push each other. They can push each other for this year, next year. There's no pressure of like one of us has to win the job or one of us is getting cut. One of us is on the last year of our deal, so we got to do this. I'm aging out of this. Like right now, they're set in a perfect position to where they can just compete. They can just chill, compete, get better, learn, 
learn a new offense, grow with a team that's growing, be energized by these new, young, innovative coaches. I mean, this is a, this is, a, and, you know, I'm not sitting here saying that Hayner or Rattler are going to be all pros, but this is as good of a situation as you can ask for for two young quarterbacks on, on a team. And this is going to just keep going back and forth for the next couple of years. So no matter how this plays out, unless one of these guys comes out and just completely falls flat on their face, I don't really think the Saints can lose. So what it does mean is that it probably means that Nathan Peterman won't make the team because if... Yeah, it, 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 yes, this means that Hayner was the one in trouble. Rattler is the one, and that's why I keep saying the timeline thing. Push comes to shove. Rattler is the one that they're going to try and develop. Right now, they're developing both. But it's up to Hayner to show that he is developing quickly. Because all Hayner has to do, the real, honestly, the real competition is between Peterman or when Mond was around and Hayner. Because if Hayner can prove that he's better than Peterman or better than Mond or better than whoever they bring in at any time, then he's going to make the team. They'll, of course, go with the young guy who they're developing over Nathan Peterman, right? If Hayner shows that he's not up to the level of Peterman yet, then there, then he would be in danger of not making the team because Rattler kind of gets that free pass because of the fact that he was just drafted, because of the extra year on the contract and all of that. And d d is that fair? Does that sound fair? Who really cares, right? It's the NFL. It's a roster. So this happens all the time. The fair is not something that happens when it comes to roster decisions. So that's how, that's how that algorithm works. It sounds like Hayner is doing good enough right now to beat out Peterman. And so it probably will be Rattler and, and Hayner as the backups. So that, th this is probably the only true impact we'll see coming out of this race. If these two guys are as good as everybody thinks they are, they should be able to lock up the number two and number three spots, yeah. whatever order that ends up being in yeah. behind their car. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. It, it just, it's one of those things where it's like, it'll play out how it plays out. It'll probably change every day. Every day on Twitter, we'll see something like, wow, Spencer Rattler was unbelievable today. Maybe he's the backup. And then we'll see, wow, Jake Hayner was unreal today in seven on seven. He's the backup now. But it really doesn't matter. Like other positions, it does matter. Wide receiver, like, yeah, it does matter who's who's where on the depth chart. Running back, yeah, it obviously matters who's where on the depth chart. It even matters who's where on like like a down on a down to down basis. But quarterback is the one where it's like you got your one guy and he's going to take 99.9%, sometimes 100% of the snaps. And I hope it's Derek Carr because Derek Carr is who we've got. Derek Carr is our franchise quarterback, and we do not have an option of moving off of him and getting someone else in free agency or making a trade or whatever. So it's one of the, it's kind of rare, honestly. It's rare that you are, unless you have like a really, really good elite quarterback, but it's rare where everything's kind of set. Everything's kind of set it and forget it. The quarterback situation, if you look at the quarterback situation right now and you took a 12-month nap, it's going to be the exact same situation. It's going to be Carr's the starter under the big contract who's an 11-year veteran or whatever. He's toward the end of his run. And then you have two young guys and Rattler and Hayner seeing who can develop fastest to become the heir apparent. That situation today, the dynamic today, will be the exact same dynamic in 12 months. The exact same. Because in 12 months, Carr will still be under the contract. Carr will still be the aging out veteran. Carr will still be the better of the three. And then you will have to decide between Hayner and Rattler who's developing the fastest. And if Carr is available, you can reset that clock. So theoretically, what the situation is today as we make this video, it will be the same situation in two years, 24 months. We'll be in the situation where it's like, all right, well, Carr has been the quarterback. Who's going to be the starter? But I don't see under any circumstances where being the QB2 really matters. And let me tell you this. Rattler and Hayner competing in itself is a positive. Because if Rattler beats out Hayner, that means that Rattler is good, right? It means that Rattler has developed and he is a good enough quarterback to, t to firmly beat out the other guy. If Hayner beats out Rattler, that's good. Because that means Hayner is a good quarterback, good enough to beat out Rattler. The only negative in this whole situation is if neither one of them are good 
and it's just two bad quarterbacks competing to see who can be the worst quarterback. That's the only negative. Whenever it comes time for Derek Carr to turn over the keys to the to the franchise, if neither one of them can take it, and we have to go get a free agent quarterback, or we got to draft somebody, or we got to trade for somebody, that's the only negative. So inherently, them competing and developing alongside each other can only be a positive. So hopefully they are good. Hopefully they're good throughout uh, OTAs right now. And hopefully that continues for the next two years. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below where you come down on this. Are you rooting for one of the two? Why? Why does, you know, like, if you are, why? If you're rooting for one to become the QB2, do you think it matters? I, I, I think, I don't think it does. So maybe I'm on an island there. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.